Hello, everybody, and welcome to Elseworlds Exchange. I am Sal, and I'm joined today by uh, Brian Michael Bendis. Hey, how are you? Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the Thank show. Thank you, Sal. Sal was diligent in making this happen, and even today, my uh, one of my kids had a little owie, and I had it to be delayed. So I appreciate all your patience. Oh, Sal. we Thank we you. we appreciate you being super dad, man. It's it's vital. Uh, how are how are you and your family holding up during the uh, the craziness? Far better than most, and we're healthy, and we're together, and we love each other and like each other. And you know, my my family has been through some. Uh, really crazy stuff together. So we've been through it all and, uh, and stuff that we can handle this. Also, you know, it, it's so strange to find out according to what the social norm, uh, definition of quarantine is. I've been doing it since 1997. <laughs> yeah, so, kind of, I'm surprised. Really, uh, compared to other friends of mine whose lives have been upended on every conceivable level. Yep. There's a base here that's very similar to how my life was before this started. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those of us who who enjoy being home and work from home, it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just don't, I just don't when I go to the grocery store, I get more than I usually get. Like it's the big change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, smarter choices. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, 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 I, I uh, for again, everything changes by the day, by the time this airs thing to be different, but at the moment uh, we are working hard on all of our books. Uh, we are we are not. Um, we were told to keep going, which I actually am thrilled about on a few levels. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a couple. If I could be I, I, because we have no other choice, <laughs> I'm choosing to be cup half full everywhere I can go with this. Totally. Um, there's something really great about not being running up against the deadline buzzsaw like yeah. we do every week. Uh, we can take a moment, take a step back, look at our plans you know, adjust for, for when we're coming back. And so it, it's been actually a very, it's so smart of DC going, Hey, let's take the time and, and get all our ducks in a row the way we want them. Totally. And, and for a book like Legion that was slipping just because of the high quality, um, uh, it was slipping out of its time slot. Right. Now we're not late anymore. <laughs> we'll, we'll, when we no, I know it sounds silly, but when we come back, we have many issues in the can, and they're all special. Now that's that's so. really exciting. And if we, yeah. if you, if actually we can start there because I really want to get an insight into where we are and where we're going and what this means because there's a lot of talk about the comic book industry. Everybody throw a rocket at somebody who has an opinion about where the comic book yeah. industry is going and how much it's it's dying. And uh, I don't like to give too much credence to it, particularly when we're talking to people who are literally keeping it afloat. And I, I feel like uh, this is a really exciting and interesting opportunity for, if, 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 you know, with the, with the indies, it's harder. Smaller press, they're having, oh, they, so they feel the pinch. Yeah. And, and again, I, I, I'm talking from a very privileged place at the moment because right. I, I know a lot of people were put, you know, had, had to put pencils down. And I know that really sucks. It, yeah. I've had it happen. It really sucks. And um, uh, especially when it came out of nowhere and it wasn't your fault. Exactly. Like, yeah, we've all had a, been fired from a job. Oh, no, I, I did. That's my fault. I deserve to be fired <laughs> is a completely different thing than, than you know, all a stop. natural disaster. Yeah. You know. So so it's 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 very upsetting. Uh, also, um, I think some of my ha cup half full attitude is, again, not to bring it up too much, but it, it's so similar what happened to me a couple of years ago um, when uh, I had a MRSA infection on my face. Uh, and I, I literally was told by a doctor I wasn't surviving it. Like I was done. He literally said, wrap it up, write notes to your kids. Oh, that's a You're hell of done. a bedside manner. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really appreciated it. He didn't. Uh, he didn't say it in a mean way. In fact, I, I remember it so clearly because it was such a caring, whispered voice. Yeah. Hey, I don't know if you're a kind of person that likes to write, but maybe you should write your kids a note. Wow. And he didn't know who I like, what I do for a living, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. and but so I so we've all faced this in my house, and my wife had a near death experience too. So there's there's kind of a more zen quality to it for us. Totally. Uh, than, than most can have. And I do. I see people uh, online uh, spiraling out with anxiety. And I and I and I, I I I understand that deeply. I know that lack of total lack of control of your life is a very scary feeling. Totally. And sometimes for some people, uh, you know, as we were lucky enough to survive ours. It, once you get past it, it comes with a very Zen attitude, yeah. uh, at least for some people, some people it does not, <laughs> but at least for uh, our family, it was like, okay, we can control what we can control and we can't what we can't. Exactly. And, and, 
and try to put out the best energy in the world that you can. Also, uh, you know, having been in a situation like this before, you you come out of it the other end, and then you you kind of take stock about like what you are personally proud of yourself for doing and what you're not. So things get very simple, mm. like oh, family and work. That's all I cared. Like when I was sitting in the hospital, get worried about what was going to happen. All I could reflect on was was the energy I put on the world in my work and the energy I put out in the world with my family. And so uh, everyone who's stuck at home right now, that's kind of our job, just like maintaining our energy and, and putting it out there and helping each other where we can. So, yeah, yes, yeah. that's why I, I, I hate to connect it to something else. But there is a it feels similar other than how haunted I am about these these um people who are in the hospital right now who can't have visitors. Yeah. Uh, I was completely surrounded by visitors the entire time and don't know what, what I, what I have done if I was just alone in my room. Yeah. Like I, it just sounds like a, a terrible thing. So, um, as we speak, we're all doing what we can to raise money to help everyone in every situation we can. So it today feels very good. Oh, totally. So, yeah, because at the time of this recording, that feeling will continue as we go. Again, I, I get to be I hate to be cup half full when people are really, really struggling. But it just sometimes it's good to hear that other people are trying. Well, and it's about the help. energy you put out there, right? Like, because if someone is in a dark place or they're feeling hopeless, it, it's better, I think, if you're in a position of glass half full to kind of project that kind of energy out there because they can gravitate towards it. They can, they can connect with it and they can use it to kind of overcome. I think, I think, I think yeah, that's a great I, positive thing to do. It, it, it is, but I also comes with the um, self-awareness that everyone handles stress and pain and anxiety very differently. Yeah. And some people are in the mood to hear a cup half full <laughs> message. And some people are just not right. I, I, do, buddy, I don't need to hear this today. <laughs> and I, I, and I respect that wholeheartedly. So I kind of like put it out there with all, Hey, if you happen to be in the mood for a cup half full, we have some here. Right. Do not worry about it. I get it. Yeah. We, we, we literally did an episode of this show where we talked about like all the different pandemics that, sh that occurred in comics you know, we talked yeah. about like uh, just the adaptation of uh, The Stand. We talked about the uh, Batman <laughs> yeah. Contagion, and it didn't do nearly as well as any other normal show. And I think it's because people were not interested in hearing about diseases at this time. And people were like, "Oh, you know, there's a lot of different stuff that comes up in comics. You should you should capitalize on that." And I'm like, "All right, let's talk about it." Nope that 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 was yeah, not I, <laughs> the conversation people were interested in having today. Uh, yeah, I, it, it is very interesting. And again, ha having been through it, I, I like I knew when I got out of the hospital. Hey, guess what? I didn't want to watch ER. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah being in the and hospital, I hospital sounds shows. again, right? So I, 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 I can't even imagine, especially after what. Like I watch all the late night talk shows. I'm such a comedy nerd. Oh yeah. Uh, that after you get through the monologues, that's about as much as I can handle. Sure. Like <laughs> I, I need like uh, um, my uh, I, I just discovered last night my uh, my. Um, my new uh, stream is uh, what we do in the shadows, which I never seen. Yeah, I never even seen the pilot, and it's such a great escape show. Really, really recommend. I literally it. just watched a promo for it yesterday, and I was like, "This show looks great. I should check it out." <laughs> I, 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 I weirdly, I hadn't heard a lot from my friends. Usually, all my friends are like Atlanta now, right? right? And, and, uh, and this one, not so much. And it was because literally all of my friends just assumed I was watching it. Right. I just literally texted someone and said, "What are we do in the shadows?" He goes right. And, uh, <laughs> the pilot. I laughed harder at that pilot than I've laughed at any pilot I've ever seen. Wow. I, mean, I really laughed. So anyway, I just want to put that out there. No, absolutely. Because yeah, answer. at the time of the recording of this, uh, you're involved in an, in an awesome Twitter-based charity where. You guys are kind of auctioning off uh, opportunities. I saw a lot of different comic creators like yourself uh, auctioning off pieces and, and writing prompts uh -oh. and suggestions and, and you know commissions, and it's just awesome the amount of the amount of uh, outswell of support for the industry and for the retailers and for for everybody. It's just it's just incredible the amount of like so, uh, it, yeah, it's community. amazing. Yeah, Cami Garcia reached out to me. You know, as everyone is like, what well, what can you do? What can we do? And uh, her and Sam put this together so quickly and so elegantly. And I, as I was sitting there going, hmm, how do we, how would we do it? Like, I was just like, in like, how will we do this? And they just got it done. And, <laughs> uh, and, and I, I was so happy because I, uh, we reached out to all our friends and between all of us, it was almost everybody. And, uh, 
Um, like everyone said, yep, yeah, in all, like everyone was just looking, give me a place to do my thing. Like everyone just needed a, like a platform to help. So, yeah. uh, I literally just woke up to, uh, I went to sleep when the hashtag started. Uh, I went, I, I went to sleep seeing Chip Zdarsky, uh, auctioning off an erotic story. Oh my God. Uh, the, I, yeah. I am still, I am so in love with that picture he drew, the self portrait of himself just reading <laughs> trash, uh, in the, in the Garfield pants. It's just that dude, man. <laughs> well, I just, just to remind everybody, you know, Matt Fraction is one of my closest best friends on the planet. I'm, I'm still 40% sure Chip is Matt. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, um, but, so, and then, then I woke up to, uh, uh, Peter Ramsey, the director of Spider-Verse just jumped in and, uh, just literally there's, there's so many cool, uh, items. And I, I literally just tweeted before we got on the phone, just clicking the hashtag is like being at the best artist alley ever. Yes. Like that I, I didn't see that in my head until I clicked on it, you know? Yeah. Like I didn't perceive it, I see it coming. But you scroll through this hashtag, it is just fun. Yeah. Even if you can't afford anything, just just go through it. Right. Yeah. It's it's the it's the best con experience you'll get and in a non-con environment yeah, and, right and, now. And and I, it's so great because so many of us were like uh oh, we're not doing conventions probably at all. <laughs> Like it was, it's such a, like we had really big plans uh, and really cool things set up that are just, just all went away. All silly stuff that we'll do later. Sure. But you know, it's a bummer. We really do like connecting with everybody and, and having the convention experience. So it's, it's a bummer not yeah. to have it. Um, but as I, I think Rose city and like with the fall shows when hopefully everything goes back to normal, yes. they're going to be like, they're going to be like, just you know, like I don't know, like Burning Man or something. I get the feeling. I, I get that feeling. Yeah. I know that uh, my big show is New York. We're over, we're over in Jersey, and it's already you know a disaster because of the Javits being under construction and be and and just the the sheer volume of people and being in the top two of the biggest cons in the area uh, or in in the country. And yeah, the the amount of like steam that needs to be let off from the from the geek community is going to be out. They're, they're not prepared. Whatever they, whatever they're prepping for now, they aren't ready. For well, the, for what the it's great people. is that, um, so there are a lot of, um, again, I'm being very capable. A lot of people preparing for a lot of cool things when this is over. Yeah. And, uh, I, so it's like, I, it's going to be something. It's just the ones I know about. I don't know everything. No, it's just, it's an insane amount of stuff being planned. It's going to be very cool. Yeah. Um, so we're in this place where you guys are working and you've been working like since it happened. There's been no stop. Well, some, some people, again, not everybody. In, no, and it's we're, true. We're blessed right now. But at DC, get, let's look, them up. just within your wheelhouse uh, at yeah. DC, you guys are working. You've been working. Um, yeah. I, I always got the impression that for you, you're working on four or five different scripts at a time. Can you dispel or confirm any of that suspicion? <laughs> and if so, what's the output now? Because not only do you have the time to work on it and the opportunity because DC's like, keep going. Also, I, I mean, may I say we very uh, unrelated to the um, uh, pandemic. We uh, like just weeks beforehand adopted two little baby Chorkies oh. um, uh, um, uh, to be support animals. And, and, and boy, that was a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like, it's coming. I need a Chorky. Like, it's just a lot of snuggles. Boom. So I, the, the adoption yeah. increase has been, uh, you know, astronomical during this pandemic and it's kind of amazing. I, I think it's lovely. Yeah. It's what is a typical Bendis output? And then what is it compared to now? Um, it's still pretty typical. Um, uh, my, yeah, you're right. You, you, uh, when I survived my, my thing, uh, I, and, and it was, it was a crazy time. I talked about it a little bit on word balloon. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, my wife was saying to everybody, remember I had already quit Marvel. Right. And I was off to DC and I hadn't finished my last Marvel books and everything fell into chaos because it was unclear what had happened to me and yeah. what was going on. And my wife was very, uh, excellently keeping everyone away from me because I literally couldn't see. I was blinded and, it, and, and told I wasn't ever going to be able to see again. Ugh. And, and so it was like, Brian's not writing the last Spider-Man script of his run. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was an 18 year run. I don't mean, I don't mean to be, I know another's bigger fish to fry today, but boy, I really wanted to finish that run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like with every part of my body. So I would, in moments of, uh, 
uh, this is show how crazy I'd get in moments of like just quietness. I'd like crawl over to a laptop and start like typing through squinted eye yeah. to finish as well. But meanwhile, it was all like, it's, you know, no one could read it. It's just like, <laughs> no, it's completely inappropriate to me. Everyone in my life is completely stressed out and I'm emailing people in the middle of the night, like, like nothing's going on. Yeah. And like, it, it was, it was, it was inappropriate. But my point is not to relive all that is that I was always a high output person. Yeah. Uh, sitting in the hospital, I thought, boy, I'm proud of that. I, I really am. I, 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 you know, you know, you're not allowed to say you're proud of stuff a lot, but sure. I, I can say I'm just proud of that. I, I did what I said I was going to do, and uh, I was really uh, feeling that. Wow, I'm not going to get to finish. Uh, like it was like three scripts, but it was like Iron Man, Defenders, and Spider Man, yeah. and they were very important to me, and they were with my friends, and and the and the stories meant a lot to me. And I, I was like, I felt I was letting my friends down. I was like, I was like, I got to finish these. And uh, it was inappropriate for me to do all that. But when I got out of the hospital, yeah, you take a stock and go, what am I happy with? I'm happy with my work and I'm happy with my family. So I'm just going to zero in on that and yeah. nothing else. And with that came. And also my added bonus was I, I had already signed the DC deal. So the, the opportunities that I've had the last couple of years were, were just in front of me. Right. Like, oh, like, I got, like, we're going to do Legion in a year. It was already set. Yeah. Right? And uh, and so so the idea, like, oh, yeah, you're gonna, you're the writer of Legion of Superheroes and nobody knows about it and you get to write Superman. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody will, like, ever knew you were the writer of Superman. It was, I was sitting in bed going, huh, I'm not going to get to do that. What a fucking bummer. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden one day you can. You can go do everything you wanted, ever wanted to do. You can go do it right now. Right. And, the, and yeah. you have that added kick in the pants, so you're probably like, Okay, let's do it. Like, okay, I'm in, and just, just, just focusing. Yeah, and and so with that, I, I overdid it a little bit when we got out. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure other people can relate to that experience where you you get out of a a, a hair raising experience and you just start running. Yeah, so I'm, like we were, me and my wife just started running all over the place, and and you know, and also we we felt like I had come to DC with a hug, and it turned into chaos, and right. it turned into and they didn't know me. Right. At all. Like Dan, like we met once me and Dan DiDio, and all of a sudden I'm bringing unbelievable chaos into their world. Yeah. Uh, 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 and without any sign that I'm ever going to deliver. Right. <laughs> so, um, so when it went away, I felt this obligation to really deliver, um, and really show them, you know, it was worth it. <laughs> right. And, uh, and, uh, but, but yeah, so there's that. And to answer your bigger question. So yeah, so I, I've always had this, Let's do as much as we can with the day. Uh, um, what did you do today? Did you get enough done? Was it honest and true work? And the extra added little Jewish guilt thing that I have is, is every artist you're working with, do they have pages in front of them? Is everybody, as they call, fed? Right. 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 Does everybody have what they need? And sometimes I have a lot of projects going on. It's important to make sure everyone's fed. You can't have people waiting around. No. That's their livelihood. So particularly during this um, situation where I'm lucky enough to keep a lot of people fed through the, the DC um, situation, I, I, I've just damn well made sure I have. Yeah. Like everyone, you know, we work on a lot with a lot of artists. Also, um, we're going to announce pretty soon uh, one of the craziest jam projects I have ever put on paper. It, it, it got approved before all this happened. Okay. Everyone said yes to it. It is the craziest thing. Uh, uh, and then as soon as, uh, the pandemic hit, every artist reached out and says, we're still doing that. Right. And I thought they were going to all back out. <laughs> yeah. But instead it was like, please let me be part of that. So I don't have to think about this real life situation we're in. Sure. So we have a, a great deal of my favorite artists on the planet earth working on a project right now, unrelated to all of this, but it's making all of my, uh, friends and peers feel good in their heart for a little bit. And that's a good feeling too. So on top of just wanting to get stuff done, there's a genuine joy in getting work into the hands of people you love. Definitely. Uh, so, and then when it's all over, we're going to have all this cool shit to show everybody. And some of it's a genuine surprise. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, um, well, because of the, th there's been a lot of speculation about where DC is going, what it's making and, and all the books that are coming from it. And, 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 and I'm sure you are at the forefront of the general the general output of what DC is going to look like in the next 
whenever we get back to normal, like three, six yeah, yeah, months. We're cooking. We're, we're, we're cooking along. I will say that uh, I, I'm not going to spoil anything or anything at all. No, so no, no. Yeah. There's literally no books coming out right now. So there's like nothing to talk about. But um, the, in my uh, wheelhouse, there's a, there's a, there's a few of uh, uh, a uh, few big meals being cooked right now. Mm -hmm. Death metal. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a lot of anniversary stuff happening. Um, but um, uh, my uh, one of the things that I was brought to DC to do was uh, new characters. Mm. Um, and from Naomi to the Red Cloud to Rogue Lazar, like we're both throwing new characters into everything and um, new villains, new heroes. And uh, I have a wave of new characters coming in literally almost every book I'm writing. A, 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 at least one brand new uh, debut of a villain or a new hero or a, new, a complete new situation. So that was that was my jam, and being able to use this um, quote unquote downtime to really develop the worlds we're building around those characters uh, uh, has been just really really healthy, really really good, and and what we're bringing forward. So uh, you know, more and more, it, there's the, a part of the audience really is gravitating to um, just new characters within the universe they love, right? Oh, yeah. Like um, now, as anything from uh, like Naomi's heartfelt story to like punchlines, not heartfelt story. Um, uh, I, that's what that seems to be getting people uh, it, back into the universes in a unique way. So yeah. we have quite a few interesting uh, choices coming later. Yeah. That, that Naomi book came out like a, like a, like a bolt of lightning. It was like so unexpected and so different. The, the art, something I'd never seen before. And the character was the kind of familiarity that I come to expect from a Bendis book where I was like, Oh, I, I know these people and I like hanging out with them. Like this is, this is just a genu a genuinely fun, spiritually like, yeah, well, that, and that one comes from it's it's more than just me. That's that's David Walker and yeah. I. We teach we actually teach college together, and so our um, the level of our how we discuss story and friends and, and our friendship and everything gets to a much higher place. And it was time to create something that um, reflected that. Yeah, um, I, you know, I have that with like uh, like with David Mack and, and cover and, and with Gatiss and Pearl. Like you you just have projects that not only reflect who you are as a creator but who you are as a collaborator totally uh, and and naomi is a hundred percent that that is that is so purely infused with all of our uh emotions uh and, and how we all felt like you know david walker was at my bedside the whole time planning this you know yeah so uh, so it was uh it was wonderful to release release it also yeah jamal um was someone who um, I, I had actually been offered to work on, on with on Miles Morales, and uh, uh, it, it wasn't the time yet. Uh, and and then here he came uh, for Naomi. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. what a what a what a wonderful. And I've had this opportunity a few times where you are you meet an artist who's just about to explode. Yeah. Regardless of you meeting them, they right. are going to explode, and you just happen to be standing next to them, being your honest self. While they do it, I've had it with Sarah Pacelli. I've had it with David Marquez. Yeah, uh, so many others. Uh, and 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 to do it with Jamal as well has just been wonderful. He is uh, beyond next level talented, and uh, and every page has been as surprising to us as as has been to the audience. Oh yeah, no, and yeah. really conducive to your style. And, and we'll be getting to like Naomi season two as soon as Far Sector is over. Oh good, okay. I mean, I'm digging on Far Sector, but man, I'm looking forward yeah, to I, season two. It's so funny they they. Far Sector wasn't totally ready yet. They were working on Far Sector, and it wasn't totally ready yet. And then they offered us Jamal. And then while we were working on Naomi, they got Far Sector ready. And then I was like, ah, I, just, I just want to keep Jamal. And then I saw <laughs> Far Sector, and I went, oh, I want both of these. I, yeah. I, selfishly, I want both of these. And uh, so I, I'm. Uh, it's it's a very talk about high class like problem, but it really is funny. Like like my like. We, we only don't have Naomi because we have this awesome book far sector. Right. Boo hoo. Boo -hoo. Yeah. And, and well, and there's no danger of not getting more down the line. So oh, no, yeah, it's definitely happening. And we've also used the uh, hilarious opportunity of just building her character through action comics and young justice in a unique way. Yes. Uh, for those, I, I've, I've never seen this done before and we're like, kind of like laughing to see how far we can pull the string, but we're still in the Naomi miniseries. 
in Action Comics. Like, oh, it's the next day still. <laughs> like, she's only had her powers for, like, two and a half days. Yeah. And crazy shit keeps happening. And we're using... Because that kind of... That's the story of all superheroes, right? But usually it happens in their book. Sure. So when we come back to Naomi, she will have been through an enormous amount of stressful situations to deal with. I mean, you worked with the biggest character, the biggest superhero on the planet. I think it's safe to say Super, Superman's the biggest superhero on the planet. I mean... You know, the responsibility feels enormous. I can imagine, it, and it every day. Well, and as a person who pioneered the whole great power, great responsibility thing to a new generation of readers, I can imagine that you you know that better than most. Um, the Superman, I mean, you you jumping in on the most recognizable superhero, but also getting a chance to do Young Justice, and yeah. But I but I'm wondering. So these are all really pure hearted people who feel good and try to project a kind of. Uh, you know, air of happiness and joy into into the world, which I, which I think is wonderful. But you're also Brian Michael Bendis, and so I'm wondering where the where's the black label book from you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I, I uh, uh, um, uh, right away I had a couple black label projects uh, uh, tentatively greenlit and. Um, started diving in. I got, you know, when I walked in, it, it, they were so lovely and were like, um, like here's Superman and we'll lead up to Legion. And, and, and we started building wonder comics. And at yeah. the same time, like black label was just off the ground and doing all, would you like, you know, and would you, you and Alex like to do a black label? And then we're like, yes, I would. Of course. you like, you feel like you're walking around this apartment. So I'll take one of those. And yes. it, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. But then when you sit down and go, okay, what stories am I telling? What work am I doing? Right. Right. And uh, most of what would have been in my black label books actually ended up being like event Leviathan, uh -huh. like b b books that like, uh, like I'm like, well, I actually don't need to do any of this out of continuity. And in fact, they're asking me to do it in like, like Dan actually said to me, take our spies and clean it up. Right. right. Could, could you do that for me? That's something that's always been bothering me. And it's really one of your soft spots. And uh, and I and I, I was like, oh, what a great challenge. I would never have even thought to do that. And I, and he was right. I was totally into it. So that kind of like consumed my black label time sure. was uh, was doing that. And then I realized that, like, I haven't like I uh, doing Batman Universe was when I'm like, yeah, I, I haven't earned any. um points with this audience mm. like my any points i earned at marvel those are those are marvel points you're talking and about disney those, books <laughs> even those even those weren't they didn't they didn't transfer from book to book you learned that with other creators careers right true yeah yeah you do good on daredevil i don't care like, <laughs> what you do for me now yeah. and that's the way it should be like by the way that is like uh, i walked into uh uh DC and there was people who loved me and were like thrilled to see what I would do and there were other people going all right what excuse me who are you and why are you touching John Kent right <laughs> and and that is completely totally fair and I have to earn their respect myself I have to by the choice I'm making today not a choice I made on Avengers 501 back in 2004 exactly so um so Learning that and uh, and respecting that it was a lot of fun for me. Uh, of course, I'm never going to make everybody happy, and I have to stay true to myself. Sure. And the stories that we believe in, but at the same time, it was nice to go. No, I, I know I might be doing something here you've never seen before, but let me let me show it to you and see what you think. Sure. Oh man. So you 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 said the magic words. You talked about Batman Universe. So let's talk about Batman Universe because yeah, I've been hyping this up uh, since I saw an image from Darrington. And how Hallelujah the the art and the writing was a perfect match and it just executed one of my fav one of the best Batman books I think of the last decade and I want to know where to come I mean was it was it a purely you know we're doing this Walmart book we know if we put your name on it hopefully it'll help um, do this um, or was it it was, it was literally in our in our very first. Um... Uh, meeting, uh, Dan told me a, a few a few projects. Uh, hold on a second. Sure. Uh, hold on, we got barking dogs. <laughs> a few um, a, a few ideas. A, a lot of them were here's what DC is going to look like next year, okay. and here's our you know where we got this Walmart program, we've got the uh, DC Kids program. It yep. was it was all things that 
that uh, saw the light of day and the hearing them was very exciting because they're all very new reader friendly and that's what our industry always needs. Yep. And, uh, and uh, at the moment between all the companies, DC had the most plans on the launching pad. Mm. And I got, and I was like, and when I was making that deep decision to go, I'm like, well, this is what I, I want to be part of right now is, is, is getting new people in the stores and getting new people reading and uh, and so yeah, so he, he goes. Uh, it was it was Dan's idea. Like when I when I when I asked if Superman was available, and it was. He he literally said, and then in Walmart it'll be you on Batman <laughs> and Tom on Superman. I'm like, oh okay. Not even knowing what like our Supermans or Batmans were like like we're gonna look like he in his head that not only would we that that would get really good Superman and Batmans out of us or something. Yeah. I don't know, like, like maybe there would be competition, but that's not how my brain works. No. But um, but you could see he he thought that that would do it, and also I think he was genuinely surprised. I didn't ask for Batman. Yeah, I think it a few of us were. <laughs> but but I, I it's so funny because I just assumed everyone asked for Batman. Like everyone comes to Marvel and asks for Spider Man, yeah, right? Right. So I'm like, and meanwhile, there's only so many that they have, and also everyone Batman is also you learn. Uh, uh, through the years that when you ask for a character, um, that might be someone's actual job right now right. Uh, that you're asking for. And you have to be very careful. Like, you don't want to bump people off their books that weren't going to be bumped. Right. Uh, the, the Superman creators were going to shift at 1,000, uh, gotcha. regardless of, of my participation or not. So that freed me up uh, uh, to go, I'll, I'll raise my hand. And, uh, and and with this, I didn't ask for Batman because that's someone's job. Yeah. Why would I ask for it? But then, oh no, it's Batman. It could be everyone's job. And yeah. um, so so yeah. So he goes. So here's it's Batman, and all he said it's for a brand new audience. We have to assume it's for an audience that's never read a comic before. Yep. And we all know what that feels like. Go. And I was like, oh, and on top of that, it's literally like the first thing I'm writing at DC. I am uh, a traveler into this new universe. Uh, I, I'm literally leaving my home of 20 years to go to this new home. Yeah. And I don't, and I, and I've been, I've been looking at it my whole life, but I have not been inside it. So, uh, uh Batman universe was my travel log book. I'm like, I'm going to take Batman with me and we're going to go travel around the DC universe. And I'm going to just based on my experiences at Marvel. Sometimes I know, sometimes I just have to go to dinosaur Island to find out if I like writing dinosaur Island. Sure. Right. And I know that sounds weird, but it's true. I like you have to go visit. Like I found out when I was writing X Men. Oh, Storm's my favorite X Men. I didn't know that till I started writing them. Yeah. I thought it was someone else. Like you. Oh, this is the one I have the most connection to. Wow. Okay. So with Batman, uh, both Nick and I, who really didn't know each other that well when we started, uh, we had a mutual friend in David Marquez. David and Nick worked together on uh, the uh, the uh, Richard Linklater movie. Um, a scanner darkly. Really? Uh, yeah, they're both, they're both, uh, artists on that amazing movie. And so David had moved up here to Portland and then Nick and his wife came to visit us and we became, uh, fabulous friends immediately. And now Nick and his wife and his family live nearby here too. So they ended up moving here as well. And, um, and then it just, and Nick, and Nick was working on doom patrol and he wanted, you know, he wanted a touch of the Batman mainstream, but both of us had that feeling like we are we are um, strangers in a strange creators land. Creators <laughs> who are no, but but we all know that like Batman was the thing that our heroes made their art with, right? Right? Like well, like Batman isn't just some book with a lot of good runs. It is high art from a lot of different places. Yeah, and creators uh, at, at our level of of arrogance. Well, we can't just do Batman. We have to like express ourselves and like, yeah, but if you like reach too high to make it art, then it becomes like self-indulgent. And uh, so we went back and forth on what our Batman was and what our, you know, what, what the tone of our Batman was. And there's a lot of Batman right now that, that can be very rated R and very oh, totally. dark. Yeah. And, and, and people really like it. And I just got out of hospital and I didn't want to do that. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and like, I like, and I was like, I like Brave and the Bold, and I, I like Paul Dini, and I, I, I was like, I think our Batman is going to have a lighter touch, um, and uh, Nick was all in, and but we were, we were, we were like, oh, I hope anyone likes this because there's <laughs> no one else doing this, but um, 
so I just started writing like all the things I feel about Batman. And I, I don't know if you saw, I posted this online. There was, I, I was going through all these books and I, I, I had the Batman uh, universe encyclopedia or just the Batman encyclopedia. And in it, there's a, a an, an essay by Frank Miller. Yeah. Uh, and, and in it, he says something about how uh, <clears throat> Batman is one of the, maybe only characters in pop culture that you can literally throw anything at it and people still see Batman. Yes. Right. And that, that, and I went, Oh, that's right. Like, like from Batman Lego to like, uh, uh, the Arkham Asylum, it's all Batman. Right. Right. No, whatever. Cause that's not it. So that really freed me up. And again, it's from, from Frank Miller, who's always, you know, come, come into my life with some, you know, real pearls. It was, it was great to like, just feel that immediate freedom to do what we're supposed to do uh, just as we were doing it. I also feel, um, and again, this gets a little, little hoity and I apologize. And I, I talked about this a little bit, but um, having, knowing where I was when I emotionally, when I wrote Batman universe, like the, like it was a very healing project. Like you can actually feel me healing all the way through it. <laughs> yeah. At least when I'm writing it. And then, um, now here everyone's reading it collected in this environment. Yeah. And I can't help but know, oh, you're reading the thing that healed me while you need a little healing. Yeah. And so there's this little extra level of, yeah, that's, that's what you're feeling there. Yeah. I, uh, I, and I, I'm so grateful that that's what it is right now. I, I've had this experience a couple of times where you're the, it's the right energy at the right moment. Yes. I've also had some times where that is not the right energy at the right moment. Thank you. <laughs> I've had both. So I know what they both feel like. So I'm so grateful that at least our Batman is a healing thing or a, just a comfort food uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a nice way. Yeah. So, uh, it, and also, uh, like, it's been very surreal to have so much interaction with people on Batman during this. Like, like you, you got a little taste of it on, with, with, with your post, but like, it's almost all day with Batman Universe and people just having that warm feeling Definitely. inside. Yeah. So I'm very deeply grateful. I, and also, again, it, it's it, Nick and um, Dave Stewart are just amazing. And, <sighs> Yeah. And after like the second chapter, it became, oh, let's see what else they can do. That's like my, <laughs> like my favorite thing. Oh, you're really, really, really good. Yeah. Let's see how far we can push it. And, and, uh, and, and so you, that's where you see us going into uh, unique uh, visual ideas. Oh, that, as, uh, that yeah. submarine uh, infiltration sequence with Nightwing? Yeah. It's just ugh, like. It's, yeah, I try, I try to describe it online. It's very hard to describe why a writer thinks that will work. Right. Like, all about, like there's other artists I wouldn't even try it with. Not that they're not excellent artists. It's just that they're not going to be able to go there. No, right? it wouldn't, it and, wouldn't work. Yeah. And, and so, uh, it, it's very unique to go here. It's, uh, for people who don't know, there's a, a submarine scene. And in the script, I described very clearly that I had my TV on, on mute. And when I looked up at my TV, it was the life aquatic, um, oh. uh, by Wes Anderson, and they, there was the shot of the boat, right? The, uh, which I love that shot of the boat, yes. right? And then I looked at, uh, then I was typing and not looking at my TV, and sometimes it's just on with the mute on, and 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 I and I look up literally hours later, <laughs> and the Batman movie from 1966 is on TV. <sighs> the sub and it's it's the submarine scene while oh all beating the shit out of each other <laughs> in front of, uh, uh, on the on the submarine uh with a bam boom bam, you know the, and uh yep. uh and then but but the shot the actual like structure of the 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 camera shot is almost identical and me and my friends sometimes get wrapped up in like what is art and what is crap and how similar it looks right right Especially when we work in a medium that uh, that can be seen, perceived by others as garbage, and we know it's not. Totally. Uh, uh, we so so I looked at it. I go now. Why was Wes Anderson shot art, and why is Batman shot not? Yeah. Right. So I just like well now I want to do <laughs> <laughs> the submarine shot. So I, I just described this to him, and and knowing he was going to do something amazing with it, and he just did. And yeah. then like so every chapter after that became well now now it's almost my obligation to create moments of, of signature uh, places for Nick to go crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and they all be different. And, and he nailed every one of them. It's, it is such a visually beautiful book. And it's also, for my money, it, it's, it's a Batman that 
uh, it harkens back to the Brave and the Bold era, as you said, and it's like it's such a joyful character who's like not a wet blanket. Like this Batman has colleagues and calls them. Like the the sequence that struck my uh, my co-host when we talked about it on another show was the one where he calls Green Lantern back. Where Green Lantern calls Batman to say like, "Hey, hope yeah, you made it back to the present," <laughs> and uh, and Batman says, "Hey, yeah," duh. and we actually like spend time to see Batman like catches up with his friends so they don't worry about it. And I'm like, that's something that like I would do, but I can't imagine, and I haven't seen any evidence to support that that's something Batman would do. But it's so in keeping <laughs> with that Batman that I'm like, it's refreshing as opposed to odd. You know what I mean? I, I appreciate that. And uh, the two, it was funny. You know, a lot of times you think you know what you're writing and then you have to like see it later and go, yeah. oh, that's what I was writing. <laughs> and then, but and sometimes it happens during and sometimes it happens after. And, uh, um, and sometimes it's exactly what you thought it was. Yep. Uh, but in, in, uh, in this uh, instance, I was like five uh, chapters in when I went, oh, I'm writing Brave and the Bold. Yeah. <laughs> Like I didn't, I didn't know that, and then, and then I was delighted because literally my two favorite DC experiences from my childhood are DC Comics Presents and um, Brave and the Bold, and that's where I fell in love with these other characters. Yeah, um, you know, they're basically Marvel team up, but I just, I just adored them, and sometimes they had a real. Um, a story gravitas that was like, you know, you, you really felt this story mattered. It wasn't just some throwaway team up, uh, particularly DC Comics Presents. So I've been referencing them quite quite a great deal to a lot of my collaborators. Also, they couldn't be more reader friendly. They're right. the most reader friendly comics in the world. Definitely. And uh, to this day, like you, your kids can read them today and become, not know they're old. And <laughs> um, my kids have. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so th- there you go. But it, w- it was fun to like, I forget which line in the script, I literally wrote in the script, oh, Nick, it's Brave and the Bull. I wrote it right <laughs> in there. Like, as it hit. <laughs> oh, crap. Probably somewhere in the Old West, I realized we were in Brave and the Bull. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah. I, I don't know, there was um, uh, a relief that sometimes you get to a place and you realize what you're writing and go, oh, no, I don't want to write that. <laughs> also, the other added bonus um, for, for the technical thing is that these chapters are 12-page chapters. Right. Uh, as opposed to 22 or 20 page chapters that are most. So it's a completely different format than most other comics. You either get eight page form, uh, chapters or 20 page chapters. Yeah. But this 12 pager allowed for a different storytelling structure that I fell in love with, just in love with. Yeah. And I think it had something to do with um, my natural uh, inclination as a storyteller, which is, uh, like be interesting before the third act. So this is, you're about at the end of the second act of a 20 page script at 12. Mm-hmm. So I'm always looking for something juicy to happen anyhow. Oh yeah. So, so I was already cliffhangering at 12 before I needed to do it. So there, the, um, that, uh, the, the format that that title, uh, has and the amount of hype that it's gotten post, publication because this is, this is a book that came out like over a year ago like we you could have read it all in your walmart books but we're hearing about it now I because it's in- I, and, th- and that's the other uh thing uh, nick and i feel it's almost like uh cheating it's like it came out from walmart and people were really into that yep and then it came out as a mini series and people were into that and yep. now the hardcover it's final destination uh <laughs> it's it's it, they're, and they're, they, they all seem to be satisfying yeah uh, as read so that that was really so we 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 got to lick the honey jar three times totally it's unusual but does the yeah. does the 12 page format do you think because of its success and the and the the conduciveness to which it worked with you do you think that's something that dc might be like you know what actually seems to work we should keep doing this like we should try this other, well, they other places they, they, they keep, I, again i don't know what's going on right now but uh um they they're they're the, the the they were successful and then they started branching out with all these cool like horror tinged ones and yeah. halloween so people and almost everyone I talked to when yeah that's a that's a that's that I know it's so weird to say to people who don't know but that twelve pages was fun yeah yeah so yeah so yes I and again I think with this little break we're in there's opportunity to really take stock of hey what was working what was not working what was like in formats and in in, in everything yeah so we can come back stronger the, so yeah, yeah. And, and 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 you know sometimes you experiment and then don't even have an opportunity to really think about what part of the experiment worked right till later so yeah it's it's this, too much of a postmortem now you everyone has to they're forced to take a break 
Yeah, it's not only just this, but the black label format is highly successful. There's yeah. like these are new formats that are that are infiltrating our market, and that's great. Absolutely, that's what we need. You you mentioned a, uh, and the a other, but the other fun thing about Nick Darrington is that he's like maybe the biggest uh, uh, two things. He's got these notebooks in his house. You can see them on my Instagram and I'm in his Instagram. Uh, uh, I went over his house and these notebooks were filled with all this imagery of pop culture. Um, and, it, and it immediately let you know what kind of creator he is yeah. and, and who he is. And, and, and then, and then I found the, the sketchbook full of Batmobiles. I'm like, Oh, right. I know exactly who you are. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so it, it let us connect with each other. Uh, it let me, it let me write to him in, in a way that, uh, um, that you, you would want to do for anybody. Definitely. So, yeah. My, my wife was a huge, and also, if you ever get him on the show, just say Batmobile and you won't have to say anything else. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward. I'm actually planning on trying to pull him in on this and we've, we've talked a little bit, so I think that's going to happen. Uh, so that's a healthy tip. I do appreciate it. My wife was a huge fan of the Gerard way Darrington, uh, doom patrol run. Yeah. yeah. Having him work on that situation with Gerard, who he was friends with and then coming to me, uh, and doing something more mainstream. Yeah. And having and I work my way. It's different than his way. It was very. It was all very fun for him. He was really enjoying it. He'll, he 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 he. For in his point of view, it, it, it had some kind of jazz, uh, improv quality to it. But that is not what was going on on my end. <laughs> that first he we were like just riffing. I'm like, I don't know. There's yeah. no riffing going on. I just on put you. Here, I just gave playing. you the script, man. The uh, that that opening page we're where up. oh we're up. ah jeez, <laughs> this is bizarre. There you go. All right, hang on. Um, the uh, the opening page where you're Batman, like where you're in the seat and you just yes. see his POV, him or you? Uh, me. Uh, that came from I have the Batman uh, VR. Have you played the Batman VR? I have. It's it's dope. <laughs> uh, yeah, it really is great. And I was uh, just my history with it was I was uh, working at Sony. You know, Powers, the TV show was on PlayStation. Yeah. And we we're going to do a third season, and they asked us to start also working on a virtual reality part of Powers. Mm. And so they sent us everything. And uh, and so, I like, my my first visceral DC experience uh, was Batman VR, right? So right. I'm like, well, that, that, that's my, my, my most honest in on Batman is the VR aspect. And I also thought, you know, there's, if this is reader-friendly, there's going to be a whole lot of people – who just have been playing the video games and nothing else. Yeah. So let us let us engage with that language a little bit. I thought that would be a cool way. Let's be Batman for a minute. Right? Yeah. I also enjoyed, you know, I was, uh, for those who have played the game, you're Batman, you're in the Batcave, you're putting on the outfit, and then there's a murder you have to solve, right? Right. So you go into the Batcave, and there's all this stuff on the table, right? And I'm immediately throwing bat batterings around the. You, you can pick anything up and throw it, yeah. right? So I immediately start. I pick up a batarang, start whipping it around. Uh, a friend of mine, another comics creator, came over. He put it on and immediately picked up the syringe and started stabbing himself. <laughs> so I'm like, and I didn't even see the syringe. And I how, la how much I laughed at that. How I played this game like ten times. I didn't even notice there was a syringe on the table. Someone else sees it and starts like. Stabbing themselves. Right. So, um, so I thought just how unique the experience of Batman is to every single person. Yeah. So let us let us start there. Yeah. Um, now, I, I, how about that? I had an answer. You didn't think I had one. No, I didn't. I was legitimately just being like, well, I don't know. Like the um, I, I read uh, the story that you shared about uh, about Frank Miller and how you got that from a from a quote of his. Um, yeah. I read another element about that, and feel free to uh, to to pass. But I read that apparently in order to get into the head of Batman, because apparently, you know, he's, he's, he's huge. It's a big kind of like scary and intimidating character that you needed to kind of know something about Batman that like is, that makes him kind of yours. And that the thing that helped you to kind of like make Batman more accessible was something like that you shared with Matt Fraction. And then he told you, don't tell anybody that that was the thing. <laughs> That made you help to like conquer your Batman uh, phobia a little bit. Uh, has enough time passed, or is that still a thing that we got a bug fraction about? I'm gonna I'm, let, let 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 fraction spill it. I, I okay. feel we, I feel that's that's got to be an auction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I should have mentioned that earlier. That could have been a uh. yeah. yeah I, I you know what? If I literally thought the the knowledge would make people enjoy the book more, I would say it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> That's... But it was, it's, it's just a matter of who my Batman is. Like an actor popped into my head. Mm -hmm. 
the voice of Batman. Oh. And it's no one you'd ever imagine. Okay. It's like no one I've ever mentioned. It's not, it's, you know, it's not Keanu Reeves. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's someone unique. And, and I couldn't stop it. Right. I could not stop writing it. I couldn't stop thinking it. It's not even an actor. I, I'm, a, uh, I'm really a fan of in any way, but uh, it, 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 it just, it was just funny. And, and then once you say it, you can't unsee it. So I'm, I'm just going to let people enjoy the book. Okay, okay. I love that. Uh, I, I will. It's, it's not, I'm not blown off the question. Eventually it will slip out. Oh, sure. I, I feel, I feel uh, in my heart, having done this a couple of times, I will not, that a year from now, it'll be 50 times funnier than today. I, I, now, you, you, you mentioned Keanu Reeves. Um, I, I didn't realize until after we talked about the book uh, online but a lot of people drew parallels between the Bruce Wayne in the alternate reality where Batman doesn't exist page to John Wick. Intentional yeah. or intentional? No, 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 no reference to John Wick at all. Um, I, I, in fact, I, I remember I, I referenced uh, uh, Danger Diabolique. Like, oh. and, 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 yeah, like what would, what would, like, if, if there was no Batman, there would still be a part of him that needs to express this darkness or whatever, 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 the, whatever is haunting him. Yeah. It would still come out somehow. Right. Right. It would still manifest itself. And, and, uh, and it's funny cause, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Matt was thinking about that with Superman as well. And, um, and we were talking about like what that, what that manifestation would be. All right. And we've all like had that where like there's something bothering you and it's not getting out. Right. Yeah. But it'll get out eventually. So that, that, that was the idea. I just put that in front of him. And then, yeah, so um, uh, <clears throat> like, like most people, my instinct is to turn everything into John Wick, but not this time. <laughs> okay. Because I was – I, 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 would, I would totally own it. I, I have written the words, let's John Wick this son of a bitch. <laughs> I, have, I have written those words. That has absolutely happened. Amazing. Because I legitimately yeah. – I, I remember seeing the page, just loved it. Uh, but then after the fact, people say, I'm like, whoa, that's John Wick. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see that before, but I guess that makes sense now. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy my, to hear my, that it was not it, intentional. John Wick has had the most influence on uh, my book Pearl, oh, um, yeah. and in, 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 with I do with, with Michael Gatos, and in in that uh, I was so deeply impressed with the world building of John Wick, and that they knew what they had, and that uh, uh, and and they and they kept the rules to themselves, and it's rules you can easily understand. Yeah, uh, um, I, I so deeply I'm so deeply in love with that aspect of it that I tried to do our own version or use that as like, Oh, if they did it. You can do it too in, uh, for the Yakuza in, in Pearl yeah. and, and keep, and by, by just by that nature made the whole energy of the book, something different. Totally. So oh was, yeah. Uh, like I always said that, that, that book was a mixture of like, um, uh, uh, John Wick and Mary to the mob, which is oh. of course the pitch everyone wants. <laughs> good, good pull. Yeah. Um, yeah. so thank you. It's of course, no, that was actually those Jonathan Demi movies were hugely influential, uh, to a lot of my choices uh, coming into those new Jinx World books. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah, I, I just, I, you know what? It, it probably during my healing process and all that, I just, I just came across something wild. The Marriage to the Mob, particularly, is a movie that I deeply love, and, and people think it's just a frivolous comedy, and it's actually uh, quite an outstanding gangster picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at it, every choice is like anti Scorsese, like, like, <laughs> uh, or anti Brian De Palma of the time. It is like whatever, where, wherever a gangster movie has gone before, we're going to a different place. We're going to a different location. We're going to like everything about it is anti cliche. Wow. And I got on. And when you see anti cliche working, yeah. Right. To, to benefit a genre, I, I get very excited. And then I, 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 and I want to do it and I try to do it for months on end. It's like what any, and particularly with, um, with Pearl, which is a Yakuza book, which uh, the uh, Yakuza genre or subgenre can get very riddled in cliche. And oh, yeah. And it was one of the reasons I wanted to tackle it because the actual world is not riddled with cliche. Why does it always seem that way on Netflix? So, um, <laughs> so, um, uh, so I, I, I wanted to apply that to to this, and 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 that was my 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 motivation that's um that's that's such it's a staple of John Denny, right these. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a staple of of what i associate with your writing at this point where it's like it it, it is an anti-cliche uh where and, and i think it's some of the things that made me fall in love with your writing in, in the first place where 
you know, it, it seems like the trappings of a conventional story or serialized fiction um, affords the opportunity to use conventions and to just kind of lean on them to allow you to propel yeah. to like the action sequence or to some other like element of the story that you'd rather focus on. But for in a lot of your writing, and it happens in Batman Universe, it happens in Superman, it happens across the board. Marvel work doesn't matter. Where characters have the opportunity to, in a cliched manner, misunderstand each other and mine phony drama and your characters immediately mm-hmm. cut through to the quick and go like by the way i know what you're yeah. thinking and it's not going to be that and you just say you, you may and maybe you spend a, a page doing that instead but it's so much more gra- for me it's gratifying because people act like people whereas if you have a real conversation you can you can cut to like real drama as opposed to manufactured drama for the sake of padding runtime yeah, people want to listen to people listen to each other. They, they, they no one, no one's like, oh, I love that story where no one was paying attention to each other. <laughs> That's fair. Remember that story where no one let anyone talk and then they didn't get to where they were going. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of those in the '90s. They starred Meg Ryan. That. <laughs> um, I yeah, that's that's a, that's a big staple that I that I appreciate. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and I know it's so funny because uh, like. Um, it's 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 a double edged sword sometimes, and I, I'm I'm never going to back down from it. I just I can't. No. But uh, <laughs> the, the people who I frustrate, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, no, but they they want the cliche sometimes, or they just want me to be quiet. But uh, <laughs> um, but the, uh, the you know some people are coming to these characters for the cliche, sure. and when you don't see it, you get confused, right? right yeah. And 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 that's okay. I had it at Marvel too. I I, I you know I'm I'm an acquired taste. Uh, I, I always have been. I'm, I'm not saying that to be blowing off anyone's criticism. No. Uh, all, all, all of my heroes are. I'm always surprised when anything is like successful because of that. Um, but I, I don't know how else to do it. Right. Um, I, I have to like write the thing I would buy, and 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 and, and anything else feels false. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, for for some people, they go. Uh, you know, like the the journey John Kent is on is probably the one that, that I frustrate um, some people the most with. Some people are completely into it. Some people are like, hey, I was at a picnic with this little boy. Now that picnic is over. Yes, that picnic is over. But it's because we're trying to do something you haven't seen before. True. So um, it's yeah. interesting. Or um, something you didn't see coming. And I will say this is interesting. I was in my in my formative in my in my informative and in the time I was moving to DC, I was you know reading all these like DC timeline books, the encyclopedia of DC, just going through everything, you know, reading yeah. everything in chronological order because that that is um, uh, one of one of the uh, uh, you know uh, stumbling blocks that DC can have. There's been some reboots, yeah. So people go, oh, which Cassie is that? Right. And, and <laughs> Uh, which Tim are we talking about? And uh, and so so I wanted to like get a real sense of it. I was going through all the encyclopedias, and when you read them all like this, they almost read like a solicitation copy in Diamond Catalog yeah. of the stories that were told. And you could see uh, certain things were being repeated over and over and over again, right? Like certain elements of the story just kept circling over and over and over, and. To the point where you go, all right, that story has definitely been told. Right, right. <laughs> we've we've, so, we've like, handled that. Yeah, yeah, like like like. So let let me let me go a couple of years without having Lex Luthor even set foot in our book. Yeah. Right. Like like let because every time he walks in, he sucks up all the air. He yeah. just like, it fluxes here. It doesn't like doesn't matter. Like like even I just did a story where Lex showed up and Brainiac is right next to him. <laughs> and Brainiac was literally fighting for dialogue because Lex Luthor is there, right? Right. So um, so knowing that, just like let's 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 take these characters on different journeys right now because they need it to survive. Right. Um, and 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 but but if people were like, no, I want I want I want the Lex Luthor every three months storyline, I could be frustrating to them. Right. Right. But when we bring Lex back, it's because we genuinely have something to share with you. And that's a that thing different than what I saw before. Yeah. Um, we're, I'm sorry if I'm over answering. No, no, no. These I mean, like these are the answers. I, I'm I'm okay. fascinated by them. And I think over answering gives you more information. I think that's better <laughs> than under answering. Sure. Certainly. Sure. I, yeah. Be able, and yeah. I always, but to be fair, it's just I know I, I, I'm never like looking to like piss anybody off or mess up your character or no. anything like that. It's never. No, but I, I see some people really think that's what it is. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, no, I, I love these characters. I spend all day and night with them. I, they, they don't go away once the book is gone. They're there with me. 
and I and, and it's my job to make sure their their journey is as interesting as and honest as I could possibly conjure. And and sometimes that means me being surprising to myself and to you and to them. What's well, the thing? And, yeah. and and sometimes sometimes that's right. Sometimes that's the right answer. And sometimes it's the wrong answer. But trying is always the right answer. Absolutely. Well, and you yeah. and you you um. You know, because you're coming from a place of authenticity and and a, and a pure desire to tell a story, um, the characters, like you said, like they surprise you, and you're you, you're like, okay, I want this character. Like finding out that F- that Storm is your favorite character, be when you had a preconceived idea about who your favorite X Man was when you started. Exactly. And so you're like, hey, and and, and also um, we, know, yeah, we we know this. Like even though I was getting the shit kicked out of me my entire X Men run, right? I was laughing. Because two of my closest friends were previous X Men writers, and they're like, the only way to get people to like your X Men run is to leave. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, everyone loves your X Men run. Y- y- and yeah. Now I have had the benefit of Jonathan Hickman uh, completely landing my my X Men run plane for me in, as part of his run. Yeah. Uh, so I, I could not be more grateful for that. But it is it, it's almost known among. Uh, uh, certain certain fan bases that um, you you will be liked later, right? Do, do you you remember? I'm sure uh, you you at least you haven't uh, if you've read it the Kurt Busick letter when he was a fan about how Claremont was destroying the X Men because the X Men don't <laughs> yes I know exactly what you're they don't go to uh-huh. space. He's like, what is this cosmic crap? This is about people who were who were marginalized in society and they're taking spaceships to fight phoenixes. This doesn't make any sense. And it's like. Uh, he was like Claremont was being savaged in the past about one of the most seminal X Men iconography like things in the you know the Phoenix is it's synonymous with the X Men and yet back then people were like crapping all over back then you know like yeah it, 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 it is one of the delights it is also it's such a freeing thing for uh, uh, people like myself and I again sometimes people hear this and. They think it means we're not taking the criticism seriously or something, right. and that's not the case. Uh, I, I'm describing that I, I too know the rage <laughs> of the reader, right? Yes. Uh, I, I have a letter published in Next Men where I'm screaming at John Byrne <laughs> for some Superman-related uh, 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 thing, and I, I, I wrote it at the counter of the comic book store I was working at in college. Uh, while the other customers were standing around me because we were arguing about some, one of the characters in Next Men. And I went, that's it, I'm writing him a letter. <laughs> now we would just tweet We would just tweet the person, sure. right? But uh, I, I wrote him, a, hey, what did you do to this character? And they published it. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm, I, I know that if I wasn't a working creator, I would be online uh, talking shit. Right, making a career on complaining about things. 100%. I, I, so that's why I don't take any of it bad. You know, no one. You don't have to be personally shitty or anti-Semitic with please, me. Please, yeah, that would be. I don't, take, <laughs> yeah. I don't take any uh, like it, when people are worried about their character. Uh, it, it, I, I get it. Right, I, I'm with you, and I promise you, I'm, I, I, I love these characters. Anyone, I, like that's the only thing I want to say is like, like any character you're writing, you love them, and when people don't get that, that's always a bummer. Yeah, like there's no character in comics. That's being written by anyone who doesn't love that character. Yeah, that, that wouldn't make any sense. Like, and, and, and not at all. There's a million better ways to make a living. <laughs> it just is. Right, than deliberately sabotaging a character. Like, I really, really want to take Green Lantern down a peg or two. I just need to. I need, I need to massage the editor and really get in there, and then and then I'll get my due, and then, then I'll <laughs> destroy it. Yeah, like no, w- it's a weird mix because you're really the. I love this character so much that all I can do now is put them in the worst scenario you can imagine like that, was which it, makes for the most interesting story you could write for them. Was it right? your quote where you're like, I can't, what do you want to read? Daredevil eating a hot dog or eating a sandwich? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I, go, <laughs> I, go, I could write the hell out of Wolverine enjoying a nice pastrami sandwich. I could write the hell out of it. You would not buy and it. And you wouldn't buy it. These people are not it, designed to be happy. character. <laughs> True in character moment and no, nothing. Yeah. So, uh, so hilariously, I, I find myself. I, I said that, but I do find myself writing the characters enjoying a nice sandwich a lot. Of course. Like I always like like uh, I always think they're on the go. It's also uh, my friends and family. We have a lot of meals together. Yes. So I, I tend to write a lot of meals. Um, like about, like with Legion of Superheroes are having a lot of meals together, mm-hmm. and uh, because that's that's where you that's where you're. Your honest best self. Right. 
I, I completely agree with that, and I know it, I realized it recently, like subconsciously, where I, now that we can't go out, one of my favorite things to do is go to a restaurant with the people I love, and it comes from a place of the past when I was a child, and I really associate that with that, and it's like, now that we're kind of stuck inside, and we're just making meals, I'm like, I get it, we're making meals, we're having a good time, but like, I miss going to a place with the people I exchange ideas with and doing that, and it's just, it, it's such a visceral experience that like, you can't replicate it and you yep. and, and you really connect with it and that's yeah. it's something i really identify with in any of it, well in any fiction really but particularly comics because it's you know my first passion but and um, it's interesting to think what's going to come out of this uh scenario we're in we have you know, literally thousands of people creating their art in uh yeah. movies and comics and music stuck home alone um, you know, like someone tweeted, oh, we're going to get a lot of apocalypse pandemic fiction. <laughs> I, go, I don't think we're going to get any. No. I know there's going to be some. And uh, but but as we were talking about earlier, it's we're, we're like it's what we're all trying to escape from. Yeah. And um, one of our goals is escapism with this medium. So I, I, I found myself writing better worlds to visit. Uh, <laughs> Legion, is, Legion is such a, a deeply satisfying uh, place to be when you're not here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so it like, yeah, so even when we're getting hard boiled with checkmate and stuff, it's all has a, like a, a fun air to it because yeah. like I, the world should be a lot more fun than it is. Yes. Yes. Do you, um, you we're we're getting to time, but I wanted to mention, um, you know, you're dealing with the Legion, you're dealing with Superman. Uh, you've told your Batman story, which I think there's about three pages in Gotham. Uh, you know, but he Why? goes to, he goes to Gorilla City, Mo Dinosaur Island. Everybody is everywhere doing the biggest things. Do you miss the streets? Cause some, uh, some cause so you cut your teeth on the streets, man. There's like, do you, do you miss that? Uh, you know, no, maybe I'll do a green I, arrow yeah, or something. Like, I, well, a, a, a event Leviathan is very, very, I'd say mean, Alex. it's dirty, gritty streets. And also like, um, sadly it, it's not going to come out till after this is over, but, uh, a checkmate. Um, is being built by me and Alex right now, yeah. and it, it's uh, uh, it's gritty and and cool, and it's on the street. It, it's specifically uh, there, and also um, uh, I have my books Pearl and United States of Murder, which are right now in active production, uh, which are That's crime great. books of the highest order. Uh, um, so that, but on top of all of that, um, uh, Action Comics uh, is um, headed right into, I, 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 I dare I say daredevil territory, oh. but it's hard, it's hard not to uh, re reflect it because it's me and John Romita Jr. who are who are daredevil creators with a language. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have a storyline coming up called The House of Kent where um, the Superman family is going to have to get together and meet organized crime on their level yep. instead of superheroing it. Superheroing it does not work. Uh, so they're going to have to get a little gritty uh, and it's uh, Lois and Jonathan Kent and Connor Kent and Superman and Supergirl and Brainiac 5 from Legion in kind of a crime family scenario. Okay. Uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, uh, uh, I, uh, the only hint I'll give is uh, uh, they go full candor on somebody. Oh. <laughs> What um so, so what 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 would Superman's family be if they if they were a crime family? Yeah, uh, but a good natured one. Sure. All uh, right. With the with the core values <laughs> of the Kents. Oh, the opposite of a crime family. Yeah. Yeah. A um, hero and now the uh, so the Kents are back, right? Ma and Pa. Yes. Yes. Um. And, and I've I've already posted. Um. You'll see that reunion. Uh. In coming very soon. Okay. Great. Because uh, they uh, the whole Kent family brings Connor to to the um. To the back to the farm, right? I I can imagine that based on what we were just talking about, uh, there'll be a sit down meal involved. I uh, actually <laughs> a little different. I gotta Ooh. say that you think the meals of see that's when you get the anti cliche. You think the meal's about to happen, but um, that's when the the organized uh, crime situation in Metropolis hits a level where Superman has to engage it immediately, and he has to do it with all of his family. Gotcha. So. Yeah, so just when you're there. That's the other thing, too. When You uh, you really have to think about, like... Uh, Your own cliche. What would be the most surprising page turn sometimes. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Well, you're, you're, uh, like the, you're, you're like the J.K. Rowling of the comic book last page, oh, my God, I need the next one reveal. I mean, I don't think there's a single issue of Amazing Spider-Man that doesn't end at a full page, you'd better pick up the next issue reveal. 
Well, that's that's the world. That's the that's the 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 gospel of Stan, right? Yeah. I mean, he said, you 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 learn it when you first walk in the door. Every book is someone's first. Every book is someone's last, and they're both your fault, right? <laughs> like, I, like, I don't if, remember that quote. But someone's that's what, first I like book, it. and they go, "That's it. I'm in on comics." You've done your job. And if they go, you know what? I hate this entire medium because of this. Then, <laughs> that, you know, and, and both can happen. And, and, and it's up to you to really think about that. And I go, of course, you you can't control like uh, and we've all had that experience, too, where you're reading a book, but you had bad clams and mm. somehow the book becomes not as fun for you because you're reading something <laughs> with your tummy when your tummy hurts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've all had that. Right. I've been there. So yeah. uh, um, so there's there's other instances I can't control, but, uh, but more, but I do take that responsibility very strongly. Also, it, those are words that came out of the mouth of the person that said with great power comes great responsibility. So you can't help, but connect those. True. Uh, Brian, yeah. I want to thank you I so much. So, so the cliffhangers have to be enormous. Also, it's a, it's, it's an art unto itself, a cliffhanger. Yes. And I, and also I learned that like in my earliest days on ultimate Spider-Man, where I were, I was a very acquired taste to a Spider-Man audience to start with. Um, uh, I would, I, I, I found myself winning them over with cliffhangers, mm -hmm. not on purpose, but like, Oh, you hate me and you're still reading it. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. But you, uh, and also you think you hate it and you're still reading it. Cause we both know if you really hated it, you'd stop. Right. That's the thing. It's, something is happening inside you. Something is changing. You're evolving. You're you're, you're experiencing something new. So it's taking a while. I had that experience. I remember I've talked about this Avengers Annual 10. Michael Golden's art freaked me out. <laughs> freaked me out. And then it was my favorite thing ever. But it took a couple of months. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know that. So I, I lean into those cliffhangers with the enjoyment of that. There's someone who thinks they hate me. Who's going to buy the next issue? Right. Yeah. There's the well because they because they the, the things that you hear them complain about are plot, not about the construction no, character. And I, I'm, I'm totally well, good with that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Where they're like, they, I can't they believe want their character to do what they character to do before. Well, that's the thing. It's like I can't believe so and so did this, but it's like you're talking about yeah. what your cousin did that really pissed you off, not about. How it's like? No, your writing, your syntax is off, and your, your and the, the the story structure is fa is fallacious, like it's felonious. No, it, it's about the things that they're like that that's connected to them, and it's like, yeah, well, I'm sorry that I'm telling them what to do, but you know, I know you're buying it. Well, and I, I do said like when people like, um, you know, like like um, the joke about you wouldn't buy Wolverine eating a nice sandwich. The other side of that is but you will buy the world being destroyed, yeah. right? Like the, the, as much as you don't want it to happen, uh, you know, we're all children of Daredevil born again. And we're all trying to like uh, make it happen yeah. in our books. <laughs> That's fair. You know, and, 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 that, and some really great stuff has come out of that. Some really nightmare stuff has come out of that, but uh, it's really everyone trying to write the most, uber version of those characters and that's to put them in the most scary places so like like with superman like why are you being so mean to him <laughs> why did you take his kid away why do you why why are you writing this book if you don't like him right so yeah and it's like no i love them <laughs> yeah exactly because that's exactly why because i love him this much yeah uh what is the future of rogel czar and when can we get more of him Nice question. Yeah, he's come, no, that's actually a good one because he is coming back, but not in the place you think. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brian, thank you so much for being here, man. It was a genuine pleasure. You, uh, I, I said this to you once before, but I'll say it again for posterity. Uh, thanks to you, I have a living where I talk about comics. Um, I, I, I owe a lot to you and your work. I'm very, no, you very lucky. You owe yourself everything. But, <laughs> but thank you for that. That's a very nice thought, and thank you. Thank uh, you. What will you be um, uh, doing for the auction? Are you doing anything? Uh, I mean, I, I, I have not. I never really thought about it. I, I guess you should. I, I will. Well, you got me laying, anything laying around the house that would blow people's minds? I got tons of stuff that's lying around. This is. I have a. I, I have a studio just, just choked with cool stuff. <laughs> um, All right. So if you got something. Yeah. Everyone needs help. So. Yeah, I may need to do that. All right, I will. Yeah. Um, this so, is a lovely conversation. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Uh, absolutely all on my side. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, and we will see you guys next time with another episode. Thank you so much. And, of course, if you want to check out more of Brian's work, you, you just got to go to DC Comics and grab one of the 17 things you're working on. <laughs>
<laughs> Jinxworld.com. Jinxworld.com. We'll take anything you need. Yeah. yeah. And oh, when are the Bendis boards coming back? You, you, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I got to tell you, I, my, 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 like, can we take a minute and talk about this? Please, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, I actually would, wouldn't mind uh, the, the public's help with this a little bit. Um, uh, quite a few members of the Bendis board have asked for me to bring it back recently, specifically during the uh, pandemic. Sure. And I, I, I get so – it just feels in my heart that it, it, the reason we shut it down is it got uncontrollable. Like I couldn't I – couldn't con- you know, yeah. control everyone's behavior and, and nor should I. And, uh, and, uh, but then anytime anything bad would happen, they go, Hey, you to me. I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. I don't run are, the boards. Right? Yeah. We so, have the same problem. Yeah. So, so, so I want to bring a board back, but is there a way to do it that, that, that in this day and age that wouldn't it be like bombarded by, by Nazis or something? Okay. Or like, you know, no, you know. but people do it anyway. And my suggestion, if I can toss out an idea, is a, a Discord. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. I should look into that more. Discord. Uh, there's a. It's you can do video chat, but more important, it's like a chat room <laughs> of the days of yore. Um, right. But you can break it up by uh, you can have like the the Bendis Jinx or the you can call the the yeah the the, the Bendis Discord or the Jinx World Discord, and. You can have like a main general chat, but you can also break it up into like multiple chats where it's like my Marvel, like Marvel DC, uh, movies, um, you know, books, that kind of thing. And you could you could break it up entirely by all these different things, and so you can compartmentalize it so that the people who are there for one specific purpose have that purpose. They can all talk to themselves, and it kind of and it alleviates the pressure on all the other elements of of the of the uh, experience. It's not unlike. Okay, it. well, I will look into this. Yeah, yeah, I, I do a little bit of research. I, I, it, it's it's um it, it's been very sweet how many people have asked to do it, and I, and my heart breaks that I that I genuinely feel it couldn't be done today. Yeah. Uh, and 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 but but I but I but that community meant a lot to us. Yeah. And and, and I, I literally I think I still hear from almost everybody. So uh, on a daily, so I always feel I always feel the connection, but I realize that it's all coming at me, right? And not at you guys. So you might not feel it as much as I do, but it's still out there. It's it's really sweet. Yeah, I think the trick is just to have good mods. Like we, our our Discord would be overrun if it weren't for mods, and it's just like just dedicated people who are at, who are actively interested in it and know it better than either of us would. And, yeah. uh, and, it, and it's just, they keep the peace and, and if there's anything like really big, they call, you know, they, they DM you and they go like, here's the situation. What do I do about this? Or I, I, here's what I recommend we do about this. And it's, it's, it, it's a lot more manageable than you'd think. Um, but All right, I'll look into it. then All again, right. I'm not right in Superman. So I don't, I don't know. It might be a little, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, again, you know, it's not even from, from Superman. I still get, I still get like a lot of weird Nazi hate mail on like Riri Williams I, or something. I can't you know? believe so that that's a it, thing. And, and miles, it's it's still it's a weird, it, yeah. So so I just it just you know it, it's not it doesn't matter. It just it, I don't I, I just don't want I do, I don't want to inflict that no onto good natured comic readers who are just trying to have a nice conversation about you know yeah the fortress of solitude right yeah 